Hello and welcome to King's Quest 6, Air Today, Gone Tomorrow, my favorite King's Quest game, and also my favorite Sierra game of all time so far. I want to make note of the fact that King's Quest 6 is a bit different from its predecessors in that there are not only multiple endings, but multiple paths that you can take and uh, to get to the endings, and many, um, many optional puzzles and optional things that you can do. Uh, we're going to get through as many of them as we can. Um, and I'm going to only show you uh, two of the possible endings, pretty much the uh, the opposite spectrums. They both end up in winning the game, but one is more of a bittersweet win uh, with uh, not the maximum amount of points. And the other is a complete win with um, all of the optional puzzles, and, um, or at least most of the optional puzzles taken care of, all of the points gotten, and uh, the happiest possible ending that you can achieve. Um, and this will all make sense, this will make a little more sense once you actually see the endings and see what I'm talking about. So, uh, without any further ado, let's jump into King's Quest VI. Alexander, here you are. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. Alexander, I feel so alone. I don't know what to do. Alexander, I wish you were here. Cosima, wait! Mother! Mother, come quick! Alexander, what on earth? <gasps> You're white as a ghost. Mother, I saw Cosima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. And it showed me how to find her. How? The stars. 
I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! Thank you. 
Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Then, he does remember. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. Alright, so, as you can see, we are playing as Prince Alexander for the second time in the King's Quest series. For the first time that we actually know that we're Prince Alexander and not someone else. Some slave boy named Gwydion. And we are basically here with no idea of where we are. No idea of what we're supposed to do since we can't get back. We have no ship no crew. We are stranded. So, let's get to adventuring. Alexander is standing on a beach littered with debris from his shipwreck. A path leads north into the lush green island. An occasional breeze rustles the nearby foliage. Okay. Not much interest there. Rocks abound on this lush volcanic isle. The ocean appears calm but there's a dimpling pattern to the surface which indicates an undertow. Indeed, and if we try to walk into the water... The ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. The same currents that drove our ship into the rocks. So, it's obvious we're not going to be swimming home. Alexander's royal insignia ring lies abandoned on the sand. It must have slipped from his finger during the shipwreck. Fortunately, it was not lost in the sea. Very fortunate. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Alexander's treasure box lies partially buried in the sand. It must have washed ashore with the other ship debris. There's a copper coin in the treasure box. The coin bears the seal of Devontree and King Graham's noble face. The box must have opened in the sea, spilling its treasure. Everything has been washed away, except for one coin of Devontree. Interesting how one coin could survive being washed away after all that, but hey, I'm not complaining. Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. Alexander moves the plank back to its original position. The ocean appears calm, but there's a dimpling pattern to the... All right, well, we've got all that there is to get here, so... The remains of Alexander's sailing ship lie dashed upon the distant shore. So, let's head north. A hollow in the trunk of the old tree forms a perfect nesting place for wildlife. A grand old tree stretches its luxurious limbs out over the crossroads. Alexander examines the tree's hollow, but finds nothing of interest. Alexander has no need to carry around large rocks. Oh, but it's fun to go around and pick up large rocks and just carry them around and stick them in our pockets. Oh well. Alexander is standing on a sunny village street. There are open shops to his right. 
a hard-packed path beneath his feet, and palm trees waving over his head. To the north, a key-shaped arch leads to another part of the village. An old beggar is peddling his wares in the village. He offers a variety of lamps, all neatly lined up on a long pole. Old lamps for new! Old lamps for new! I guess he's selling old lamps for new lamps. Good day, peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? Well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. Ah, so it's new lamps for old, then. Rather interesting, if somewhat unlucrative business. I would imagine that anyone who gives them an old lamp would have probably already tried and see to see oh. if there was a genie in it. But maybe it's just me. The battered chest does not interest Alexander. It's probably full of plain earthenware. Alexander is not in the market for pottery just now in his life. Alexander examines the large pot. It's currently empty, but a few scraps in the bottom indicate that it is used as a dump site on occasion. Hmm. Got a pawn shop here. Good day! With quite the interesting array of items. A strange looking winged device occupies one corner of the room. It is frail with disuse. Alexander finds it intriguing. Perhaps he thinks it was once used in a local sporting event, in which enthusiasts jumped from cliffs, glided on air currents, and then attempted to land, frequently crunching a bone or two in the process. <laughs> Alexander shudders at the thought and decides to stick to dragon slaying. Much safer that way. Much, much safer. Towering mightily over the other pawn shop curiosities, the stuffed bear makes an ostentatious display. The pawn shop is a dimly lit place with a slightly musty smell. Curiosities litter every corner and every shelf. For sale are articles that range from the bizarre to the commonplace, from the priceless to the practical. The pawn shop is a dimly lit the back wall of the shop holds various odds and ends. For example, a hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. Like the small sailboat in King's Quest V that you may have seen me sink in. Cat cookie mix. Play tricks on your friends, the box says. And get them kidnapped by evil wizards who want revenge for playing tricks on your friends. Hmm, yeah, that's a great idea. A golden bridal finder for finding those nearly invisible golden bridles. You know, like the ones people stick inside hulls of ships where you're not likely to spot them. Self-adhesive emeralds, what you use when you don't have honey. Hmm, Graham could have used some of those recent recently. Tongue climbing gear, tested on over 100 whale tongues. Helpful for when you've got to climb up a whale tongue and you can't quite find that right spot that you're supposed to start from. A uvula tickler, guaranteed to make large mammals sneeze. Typically sold in conjunction with the whale tongue climbing. A cheese hook for retrieving cheese out of small holes. For when you just don't want to start at, stop at that harpy island. A shovel that's guaranteed not to break for over 100 grave diggings. Hmm. <laughs> Like the shovel in King's Quest 4 that breaks if you dig one too many graves. A bridge repair kit for when you've crossed a bridge one too many times. Especially when you're trying to remember that riddle that was written on the other side of that door. What was that riddle again? Hmm. Can't cross the bridge to find out. Stair traction pads. 
Stop slipping off those narrow staircases. Yeah, Rosella, stop slipping off the staircases. Gosh. A hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. The back wall of the shop holds various bottles and potions. For example, a bottle labeled Owl Courage Potion for spineless owls. You probably shouldn't get that one. It's probably a poisonous potion. A bottle of Gnome Be Gone. For those gnomes who steal your magic mirrors. Miniature Carpet Cleaner for those castles in a bottle. Ah, who would ever have a castle in a bottle? I mean, really. Bird's Nest Soup Mix, treasure not included. Well, of course not. I mean, why would you stick a huge golden egg inside a bird's nest soup mix? Garlic, especially grown for vampire resilience. Well, that would have been useful, but we had a silver cross, so, you know. Magic Mirror Glass Cleaner for when your future looks fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. Shark repellent. That would have been exceptionally useful in King's Quest 4. A small box of enchanted sorcerer's flea and tick collars. For those sorcerers that you've turned into cats once and twice in your lifetime. A bottle of gnome be gone. Like I said, pawn shop has all sorts of crazy stuff. The land of the Green Isles must have at least one inhabitant with interest in the mystical, for a crystal ball has been traded in along with the more common household goods. An old suit of armor stands in the pawn shop. It looks like a vigilant guard against thieves and carpet salesmen, even though it is headless. <laughs> carpet salesman. A helmet, probably belonging to the headless armor also in the shop, has found its way to a separate part of the counter. A tall skeleton lends an air of mystery to the shop. Alright, I'm going to stop looking at everything because otherwise we'll never get anywhere. Good day, merchant. Can you tell me what land this is? By the moon's light, what a question! You must have been out too long in the sun or perhaps knocked your head upon a rock. Uh, no. Well, perhaps. I was in a <laughs> shipwreck, you see. My crew and I were trying to reach the land of the Green Isles. I think, well, at least I hope, my men got away safely in the lifeboats. But I myself appear to be rather stuck here. Ah, I see. You must pardon my incredulity, but it has been so long since we have had a foreign visitor. You wrecked your ship, young traveler, due to the currents and reefs around the islands. If your crew was wise enough to steer clear of the isles and head home, they should be fine. In any case, you have met your objective, however bumpy the journey. You mean, this is the land of the Green Isles? Oh, thank the heavens! I had followed the stars, you see, and, and I thought I was close, but... The stars? You must be quite a sailor, but what is the purpose of your visit? I come for... Well, I mean, I, I hope to see... I met some time ago. Say no more. You are smitten with a maiden, are you not? What other than love could so confuse a man's tongue? I am afraid so. It is Princess Cosima. By the desert sands, when you fall in love, you do not mess around, do you? Is she here? This is the Isle of the Crown, young man. The Castle of the Crown stands on the hill. If it is Cosima you seek, that is where to look. The Castle of the Crown. Thank you, merchant. And good luck to you, lad. You shall need it. Ah, well... So we do know that we have ended up where we wanted to be in the first place. That's something at least. And we know where to find Cosima. Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt and so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended and why the crown has not done something about it is beyond me. 
But then, I am a shopkeeper, not a politician, and can only hope for better days. How bide you, good merchant? Quite well, though a purchase would not hurt me any. Well, of course, a purchase wouldn't hurt anyone any. An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. Hmm, mints. Alexander takes a mint. Alexander eats the mint. Hmm, not bad. A little stale, perhaps. Eh, hey, who ever heard of a stale mint? Alexander takes a mint. Alexander takes a closer look at the items on the counter. I see you have noticed my mechanical nightingale. She is made of plain tin, but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine, barely distinguishable from the real thing. The flute is only made of plain wood, but its notes are fine and true. Ah, yes, the painter's brush. It was well used by one of the island's best painters. There's a lot of creativity in that brush, and its bristles are still in good condition. Have you an interest in tinder boxes? This one is only slightly battered. It holds a good supply of flint, a sturdy striking pad, and even a candle in case you find yourself with naught else to hold the flame. Sorry, there was a little uh, hiccup in the video that I had to edit back in there. Um, sorry about that. A small rusty hatchet seems permanently embedded in a log of wood. Alexander's mind races over the possibilities. Perhaps the bound duo is the local woodcutter's equivalent of the sword in the stone. Perhaps someday, somehow, someone will free that hatchet and become king of the forest. Then again, it could be just a rusty hatchet stuck in a log. Yeah, I, uh, I think we're going to go with that second story. Alright, so, we you know where Princess Cassina is now. The castle that we saw earlier, off to the right of that big tree. Uh, but before we go there, we're going to stop right here first. The sign above the door says, Ali's Books. That's just the way. Seller talking again. Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? Hmm. Who's this strange man with a... What was that? A sparkling eye? An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Hmm. Oh, not very friendly, whoever he is. The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. His intelligent eyes are slightly blurry from long nights spent reading by candlelight. Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I am on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village, and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. 
The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. How fare you, merchant? I have been reading too much love poetry lately. It is rather depressing to an old bachelor like me. <laughs> I know how you feel, Ollie. Alright, well... So we've been told twice now that we should go out to the Castle of the Crown and seek an audience, so that is what we are going to do. But we will have to save that for the next video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.